Namaste everyone. Gita Didi has raised hand. Let me take her reflection first and then I'll read the assignment that we had yesterday. Sabhi ko namaste. Namaste. Uh, Bhaiya, I have got two queries, Bhaiya. Uh, yes. First query is, can the source of imagination be an external event? Some event outside may trigger. So can that be a source of imagination? This is my first query, Bhaiya. Regarding to the second query, so we say imagination is feelings, thoughts and expectations. I can see feeling which has to be felt. So the feeling will make me either comfortable or uncomfortable. Fine. With respect to thoughts, I will be thinking in a particular language. So language is an important part of thinking. That is thoughts. Expectation, I am going to do it outside or it may still be a thought. But when it comes to information, Baya, the transaction between the Self and body is through information. How the self is making sense? How the self is it's making sense? Uh, how the uh, self is making sense? It understands that information, the transaction between the information, how the self is communicating the information and how the self understands that information. So it is not a feeling and it does not require language. The information is not a language also. Then how the self understands that information by ya? There I am getting stuck up. Okay, Didi. So the first question, if you see, the source mm. of imagination can of course be something outside, some event. Mm. But that mm. event mm. Itself is not the source. How I associate meaning to that event becomes the source. That could be based on some assumption you know, or some sensation. So that is there. So the events outside are of course triggering our imagination. That is there. That is a common thing. That does happen, you know. So uh, things are happening outside can of course trigger our imagination. Yes. But whether I become comfortable or uncomfortable will be decided by how I associate meaning to that event. And that could be based on preconditioning or sensation or natural acceptance. Uh, Baya, can you make it clear? Uh, I I am getting, but I am not able to understand it. Uh, how I associate meaning? For example, let us take an example uh, of event outside. My neighbor comes with a long, shining, red-colored, ultra-modern car. That is an event outside. Okay. Right? It comes mm. as a sensation to me. Isn't it? Okay. Now, mm, if mm, I create mm. happiness to this, then my imagination will be running in one direction. If I do not associate happiness to this, my, mm. my imagination would be definite. I can simply see that I don't need it. What I have is enough. So it will not mm. touch my imagination. And I'll continue with what I'm doing. I'll rather mm. go and congratulate him that yes, you have a very nice car. And now let us think of right utilization of this. Otherwise, I may start counting my saving, how I can manage this car. Similarly, if I see somebody congratulating him and appreciating him for having this kind of car and I may mm. assume that this is respect. Mm -hmm. Then again, I may start thinking of counting my budget, you know, calculating how much I have saved so that I can also have this car. So the events are taking place outside. They are coming as information mm -hmm. to me through sensation and then I am associating meaning to it. It could either be based on the assumption that this sensation gives me happiness or this gives me respect or I can evaluate in the on the basis of my right understanding that I don't require it. That's fine. So that is a common thing. What you are saying, yeah, yeah. of course, events are happening outside. I get the information mm. inside and then I associate meaning to that. And that is based on my sanskar, which we explore deeply in exercise two. And that sanskar, you know, is made up of my preconditioning sensation or natural acceptance. Uh, now I got it, Baya. So mm -hmm. the sources may be outside, but when I give meaning, it will be either precondition or sense, I mean sensation or sense, I mean or natural yes, acceptance. Yes. Um, see, Baya, I got it. Um, thank yes. you, Baya. Nice, Didi. Now going to the second part of the question. So desire is feeling. I have a feeling uh -huh. with which I am comfortable or uncomfortable, which you rightly mentioned. And then I am thinking. Now, it's not mm. that all thought is associated with a language. The language is a sign, a symbol. So I'm analyzing and comparing. 
this activity is basically taking place in me. I may do it using some language. I may not do it using some language also. So something I'm doing within, I'm analyzing and comparing. Now, it so happens that many times I start talking to myself in my thought, explaining to myself or explaining to others. Those kinds of things may start taking place in the self. Then I may need a language. Mm -hmm. And the information that I'm getting from outside, I am reading that sensation in testing, the activity of testing. So the exchange of information when it is taking place, so when I'm getting the information, it is through testing. When I'm sending the information, it is through selecting. I'm saying... Uh -huh. Information yeah. that I'm getting from outside is through testing. And the instruction that I'm giving to the body is through selecting. So I'm sending some instruction to the body. How do I do that? Through dynamic activity. And I'm getting some sensation from the body. How do I do that? It is through state activity. But I couldn't understand, Baya. But how the self is getting it, Baya? In what way it is communicated? That I am not clear, Baya. Let us look at this moment when we are talking. I am saying something. Mm. What is happening to your body? The voice is coming through mobile to your body. Through the organs in the body, right? The information is reaching you. Okay, so fine. First of all, some voice is coming from mobile to the body. Now the body has ears, right? From the ears, it goes to brain. From brain, mm. it is going to self. Now that you have mm. decided to listen to what I am saying, you are listening to me. Mm. So you are getting some information. It is in the form mm. of words, sound. Now mm. how you are getting this sound? Through testing. You are testing my sound. Mm. And of course you have selected to test. Yes. So you are testing my sound. Now you are, mm. based on your sanskar, giving some meaning to it. So that will include mm. the understanding of language. Understanding basically means here uh, awareness of the language. You know? So mm. when I am talking in English, you are able to follow. But maybe sometimes when I am talking in Hindi, you may not be able to follow. Ji, so ji. you have that awareness of language within you. If I start talking Chinese, then you will not follow. So mm, there mm. is one part of it, right? Whether I am able to get this language or not. Mm. And then when you are getting the language, then you are associating meaning also. Right? Yes. Whether you When we get the meaning, you try to evaluate it. It is right or wrong, good or bad. This way or mm, that way, mm. you, know, you judge also in the process. So what is happening here? You are getting it through testing and then it is going upwards. Mm. Then you are analyzing the meaning, comparing what I am saying. So when I am saying something, you are comparing with the proposal that you have got earlier. And you are putting my words you know, in conjunction with what you have got earlier. And mm. then you are analyzing and then imaging Right, so this way it is happening in your imagination. Now, mm -hmm. if something is not in like in consonance, in agreement with what you have listened to earlier, then you again raise a question. If this mm -hmm. is so, then how it is so? Mm -hmm. Right. So again, now what is happening in your imagination? Some, you know, imaging, analyzing, comparing, selecting, testing, taking place. Now, when you are raising a question, so you have selected that this part is not clear. Let me ask. Mm -hmm. Mm. Now you are sending some instruction to the body. Now here is some transaction between consciousness and material. So like micro signals you can say are there. Uh, very subtle kind of signals. Which I am able to send and the brain is able to receive. Now mm. the brain further amplifies it. Mm. So the brain will amplify and then you are able to speak up. And then you utter some words. Now when... You are uttering some words, they are like macro signals. From the self, the brain got micro signals. They got amplified and then and I spoke and then the mobile catches it and then I get that information. So this is the whole way of communication. So something is happening between within the self. Something is happening between the self and the body, right? Something is happening in the body. Then something is happening in correlation of body and some physical instrument. Then something is happening between two physical instruments. Again, the same sequence. From physical instrument to my body, right? Then within my body, then between body and me, and then within me, and so on. This is how communication goes on. So the question here is, Bhaiya, so um, the transaction between the self and the body 
and information which does not require any language it is not of a particular language the self you know, doesn't understand any language no, so only no, this yes analyzing and comparing may not require language but when it is between the self and the body there will be some symbol no something would be there so it would be sight it would be sound right so sight also has a language sound also mm-hmm. has a language touch also has a language but those are signals only no bhaiya so language is a signal a symbol that's all uh. so for example but i see some, language. i see some red cross on a car that is a symbol mm. and i make mm, out that mm. person is a doctor mm mm or there could be d o c t o r written over it the car and then i said that this person is a doctor mm mm or i find that person with a stethoscope and then i said that this person is a doctor mm mm isn't it mm mm so all those things a person touches my nerves in such a way that it appears it appears to be very experienced touch very you know kind of mature touch i can say that are you maybe i can make out that this person is a doctor that's mm-hmm. how he is able to make out the nerves so easily so all those things what is happening here some event is there and then it is working as a sign or a symbol for me now if doctor is written in chinese language then i will not be able to make out but if it is written in english language or hindi language i can make out so try to see what is happening at the level of desire thought and expectation so when it is between the body and the self some information is going and that information will have language also now the meaning that you associate to the language is your choice is that bhaiya uh, i think i need some more time to explore bhaiya but basically bhaiya uh, the self will understand for example with respect to me i can understand tamil and english so it means that the self understands tamil and english the self also yes. will understand the language or uh, language is not required for the self bhaiya Uh, that information alone is sufficient for the self because only information is transacted between the self and body no what is that the up to what limit that information comprises of the symbols also no mm mm yeah you are reading some symbol or mm-hmm. you are listening to some sound the sound mm-hmm. is also a symbol what you write is also a symbol ji bhai up to what level language plays a role to the self the primarily language so you associate meaning here when you are uh-huh. testing this language you associate meaning here at the level of expectation only uh-huh. now this is also working in conjunction with imaging and analyzing and comparing so uh-huh. for example when you say bad now if you look, just look at animals okay uh-huh. animals also come yes they can communicate yes but they do not speak english or tamil Mm-hmm. but they have symbols to communicate ji yes. like a dog will bark yes if some dog some from another area enters some dog's area this dog will start barking that mm-hmm. is a symbol mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. other dog is able to see that now you know my border line has come i should not be crossing this border line otherwise they will mm-hmm. fight with me so that barking also is a language yes a form of sound it is said that okay, if okay. you if a lion has to demarcate its area then what mm. it does it will take a survey of that area and pee around that area that peeing of the lion becomes a symbol mm-hmm. for other lions that one should not be crossing this line mm-hmm. now here what is happening is happening to smell if you look at the conjugal relation between animals it is through smell so all these are mm-hmm. symbols mm-hmm. it would be sound mm-hmm. it would be touch it could be smell it could be sight okay. it could be some form so, yeah so we are using a sophisticated symbol like words yes yes what is the bottom line by here the self understands the language the information is also this information comprises of language. all these things this information comprises okay. of this language also and the language could be there in the form of some sound some script some symbol mm-hmm. some smell whatever some touch okay. some form okay like somebody is okay. staying uh, in our neighborhood and this person is not at good terms right now my baby is going to the school and i find this mm-hmm. person is standing mm-hmm. on the way now this becomes a symbol oh let something not happen to my baby 
Tyler Scott mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. to the school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now what has happened? Some form I have seen, and I have mm-hmm. seen some meaning to this. This person is my opponent, and this person may mm-hmm. harm my mm-hmm. baby. So merely mm-hmm. the sight of this person triggers imagination in me. Mm-hmm. So it is a symbol in the like a form. Is that clear? Thank you so much. Uh, let me explore more by your form. better understanding within myself bhaiya thank you so, so nice. much swayam prabha ji uh, ji bhaiya namaste namaste uh, bhaiya uh, like i have uh, some two questions one is uh, just now you are discussing about tasting that is i am able to listen to your voice i, I mean i i make a choice of listening to this particular session so is it uh, that is when we are associating the meaning of taste to the choice We are associating meaning to the like taste. Just say, um, uh, uh, you said na ki uh, like uh, like supposing ye wala se- this session is going on and I I am listening to this session Ji. and I'm making uh, uh, so this is coming as a tasting uh, that is uh, you know this the message that you are sending to me so it is going through my uh, through uh, the mobile to my body. Okay. So is it that that when I make uh is choice and tasting uh like somewhat similar that is i make a choice of listening to this session so it is uh, so that is where this tasting intervention is there is it like that you have selected to taste you yeah, have selected so my selection tasting. is a choice isn't it yes 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 see whatever is happening within me is my choice yeah okay yes yes whatever is happening within me is my choice yes Uh, and, and whatever uh, is happening yes. in the body, and whatever is happening in the body, if you look at it, there is no choice of the body. It is just physiochemical. But whatever is happening within me is a conscious activity, and it is always a choice. Yes, choice yes. means I have options. Okay. When I am selecting, I have options. When I am testing, I have options. When I am comparing, I have options. When I am analyzing, I have options. When I am imaging, I have options. Yes. 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 Right. And in block B one, there are only two options. <laughs> Either I see it, or I don't see it. <laughs> okay. So that is again, uh, that is again the need of the. I mean, that's a choice of the self only, whether to see it or not. Choice is always by the conscious unit. It is never by the material unit. So whatever is happening within me is my choice, and is there. Yes. And then the need is of the material unit. Supposing uh, like that, uh, what uh, like to eat food. Okay. Uh, so supposing I'm having, uh, I, I'm hungry. So this feeling of hunger is there, and uh, intermittent that is also true, and it will be satisfied by physiochemical things that is also true. But then the choice of food that I make, that's of myself. But the need of food at that present time is of my body, isn't it? Dear? Yeah. So the body needs some physiochemical things so that it can continue as a bio unit. That's all. Now I make a choice. to go for food or to avoid food to go for this kind of food or that kind of food okay so that is also in the conscious uh, like in the conscious mind yes i will not use the word mind here now it is uh, there. Mani, uh, the self yeah in the self yes and the yeah, second question that you were talking about uh, some certain clues that we give like uh, dogs barking uh, to because they are territorial and so they not uh, invading into others territory or uh, any other things like birds also the tweets of the birds are also something non verbal so is it uh, to non verbal communication that you were focusing on that is when we uh, like certain information like even if i don't understand as didi was saying she is uh, she understands tamil and english even if i don't understand tamil but through the body language there could be some sort of a, a communication between me and didi supposing we are not communicating in english and only focusing to english i mean tamil so is it like that that uh, these are the body language also plays a role in our uh, understanding of things is it okay Yes, yes, yes. See, it is again our meaning of something being verbal, something being non-verbal. For dog, we might be doing something non-verbal. It could be come something mm-hmm. nonsense also. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, spending so much time, you know, with day may appear as nonsense to a dog. Right, right, right. right. So, okay, so yeah. non-verbal is again our meaning. So, whether we are using words or using symbols. Now, if you just look at AI, what it is doing, it is replacing so many verbal things by mere some single, some symbols, some instructions. 
Right. Just press a button, right? And it does so many things. No need to explain to the machine that do all this and that, right? Right, Priya. So basically, this is the like when we uh, listen through the sound, taste, smell, vision. So these are all those. Uh, that is the whether to uh, whether it is with the choice of words or not. But there is still some sort of a conveyance of message going on. Of course, information transaction is taking place in me and the body. Okay. Yes, Priya. Priya, and last question. That is, you talked about static and dynamic activity. So, uh, like, could you just static? It is state and dynamic. Ah, state and dynamic. So, Bhaiya, could you just give me uh, just one example? Could you just say, uh, like, I'm uh, I'm getting a little confused actually. Dynamic is uh, that is changes, I think, isn't it? Dynamic is the natural decision with the state activity. So, testing is state activity. Selecting is dynamic activity. So, okay. I am selecting now. It is something which is triggering other activities. So, I am selecting to listen to you. Now I will instruct the body. So when I am using the dynamic activity, right? Then it is activating other activities, some okay. physiochemical activity or activity within me. But when I am, you know, there with the state activity, something is getting placed in me. It is not triggering other activities. It is getting placed in me. For the taste, taste of rasgulla gets placed in me. Taste of sound. Gets placed in me uh, because I make a choice to listen. That is why this is getting like uh, state in me. Nothing like because here. So state activity is when something is getting placed in me. Okay. And I mean okay. Activity is the natural decision with the state activity, which is triggering other activities. Okay. Now when you use the word choice, so I said choice is there with all the activities because yes. I can discover that way. Yes. I can yes. taste your sound, or I may not taste your sound if I'm paying attention somewhere else. Right, right, right. Anyways, thank you, Bhaiya. But still, <laughs> like, I think I'll have to uh, like you think more about this state and dynamic. Though it, I got it. Uh, that is something getting uh, uh, like supposing it's rasgulla. So the taste of rasgulla is state in me. It's stated in me when I get that stated. information. Yes, but what would be the dynamic thing here? Go for it again. Supposing uh, I had rasgulla, so the taste of rasgulla is stated in me. Yes, and I also stated a meaning to it that this is very tasty. Huh. And dynamic? Dynamic is that I plan to go for it again and again. Oh, achha. thank you so much, Bhaiya. Thanks a lot. So it is the natural decision in me, uh. or the decision. In fact, I'll say that. At the level of conscious or uh, block B1, I can call it a natural decision. Here it is a decision, may or may not be natural. Right, right, right. Very, very. <laughs> yes, we yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. So we take one rasgulla and we find it tasty, and then we plan to go for another and then another. Right. So what is happening? I am selecting to take one more. So it is a decision yeah. making in me. With that yeah, taste. which is a dynamic process. Yes, yes. Nice, so. nice. Really. Anyway, thank you so much, Bhaiya. Thanks a lot. Many hands are here. You just read the assignment once and then I'll go about discussing this. Notice the imagination going on within you. Observe the object of imagination first and then see how imagination goes from one object to another. Try to see the source of imagination, some preconditioning or sensation or your natural acceptance. Try to make out the desire that is imaging, the thought, analyzing and comparing, and expectation, selecting and testing with every object of your imagination. Note down your observation in your journal. We'll discuss our observations and questions. So this is one useful exercise. You can start from here. <clears throat> and in step one of exercise one, uh, we can do it again and elaborately we can do it. So make out the object of your imagination. <clears throat> make a dot and then just write briefly. For example, my attention goes to my family and then family from family it goes to my spouse then from my spouse it goes to some incident that took place few days back from that incident i am reminded of my attention goes to a friend then from friend it goes to let's say some office and so on so this is how the object of imagination is migrating from one point to another to another to another this is something that i can make out one thing now with every object of imagination for example when i am imagining about house or family then what is my feeling, right? How I am analyzing my family. So you'll see that there is some feeling associated with every object of imagination, comfortable or uncomfortable. You know, finding it 
natural or unnatural happy or unhappy with it so this would be there with every object of imagination now from family if the attention goes to spouse then what i have done i have analyzed the family the family comprises of six people seven people and i pick one member from there so in my family like there is some image of family in me i analyze it so break into multiple parts my parents are there wife is there you know children are there brother and sister are there so all that makes family from there i selected to pay attention to my spouse so there was an image of family i analyzed it and then i picked the image of my spouse now here some comparing has taken place at this moment paying attention to the spouse holds a higher priority than other members in the family so i have compared here with that i have selected to image about spouse and then when i image the spouse then again there is some feeling associated which i taste at the level of tasting and then i am also imaging that person so this way you will see that within me the object of imagination is going from one to another with every object of imagination there is some feeling associated i am analyzing and with this analyzing only i am going to the next object and there is some comparing because when i am analyzing there could be 10 things and i selected only one so i am comparing between various parts of that image and then from there i am selecting and that's how i am picking one image and then i am testing that image you know the feeling i am testing there so this way you'll see that all the time we are doing something like this all the time in my imagination i am imaging analyzing comparing selecting testing right and with this only the object of imagination is moving from one to another so you can observe it within yourself it will appear like when you are you know uh, not engaged some activity and you just try to observe within yourself you can see all the things all the activities very clearly how i imaged how i analyzed how i compared how i selected and what taste i am having isn't it so do that for yourself this will give you much clarity so this is something that we have to do yesterday today is sunday if you get time then sit by yourself for half an hour do this if you have been trying to pay attention to the imagination earlier also then you can do it in a mature way otherwise you can begin by just making out the object of imagination those who have joined for the first time in the morning session may find it even difficult to make out the object of imagination right so we'll do that even uh, now during the session let me take a few questions and then we will try to do this exercise okay raju namdev ji ji namaste bhaiya bhaiya in uh, desire thought expectation we are only imagining the pictures or uh, we are imagining uh, the something different pardon in desire thoughts and expectations in these things only we are uh, going for the pictures or anything else no what is picture uh, that is uh, in the form of uh, just as a uh, uh, photographs photos no 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 see you are imaging right huh. so imaging there is a feeling so hmm. there you know would be something that you try to envision within you it could be some picture also some scenario whatever and there is a feeling also associated with it so Gee. like a tv picture that you see it's not like that it is there in you try to make it out nice ji bhai i i'll see it uh, it is uh, correlated with the feelings also na yes yes ji bhai ji bhai thank you ji bhai good morning bhaiya namaste good morning namaste. to all co explorers um bhaiya i have a question about uh, desire um it need, need a clarification um uh, is desire is same thing as a feeling cuz uh, sometime when i directly uh, Uh, try to observe desire i could uh, relate directly to the feeling that uh, wherever that desire coming from that's what i'm feeling at the current moment um and uh, then i could uh, make the most understanding from it that what are the what is the source that it's coming from either it's sensation or preconditioning or is it natural accepted yeah uh, so is that desire is there with a the feeling in place of saying that it is the same as feeling it is there with a feeling so desire is essentially imaging and contemplating isn't it so yes, you image a happy and prosperous life now in that happy and prosperous life there is feeling also but you are imaging also yes. what happy and prosperous life means to you yes you are imaging and there is a so feeling, bhaiya, uh, feeling prosperity is a feeling yes so bhaiya most of the uh, feelings or 
or I actually uh, think desires and feelings are really similar. Uh, the most of the feelings that I'm coming from is having the um, the relationship feeling with other. Sometimes, um, you know how we see the movies and all the uh, all the life that we reflect back. Most of the people have given a different meaning to to the word feeling. Um, even in Hindi session, we talk about bhav. <clears throat> but the, the somehow the meaning has gotten lost that I get confused as well because um, you have that the, the feeling of relationship is different and then having any other feeling that feeling of anger or or frustration because the words is uh, said so many times over the time that uh, it, it lost the actual meaning uh, in my imagination. Are you able to clarify the word feeling? Um is it so same as how you relate? Yes. Feeling is how you relate to the other person, to physiochemical things. That is your feeling. Right. Now it could be based on understanding of harmony or natural acceptance of harmony, or it could be otherwise also. So anger is not harmony. Frustration, depression, anxiety, revenge is not harmony. But trust, respect, affection is harmony. So that feeling could be this way or that way. So is it good to say that? Feeling drives the desire? Feeling is there as desire. Feeling is there as a part of desire. Yeah. With that desire, in the contemplation, I am able to contemplate upon naturally acceptable feelings. Now, when I am not able to contemplate on the naturally acceptable feelings, and still I am imaging, then mm-hmm. certain things are getting mixed up, which are not natural. right? And with that, I am imaging something for myself. So let me be the richest person on this, on this planet. I am trying to image you know, something there. And I feel that once I am the richest person, I am going to be a happy person. So there is some feeling associated with that. I am also imaging a life as a richest person. Okay, Bhaiya? Yes. <clears throat> Bhaiya, uh, one small question. So if when I am observing, if I am focusing on thoughts too much, it's it doesn't get me anywhere. But when I am trying to observe the feelings more, then I get more conclusion out of it, whether it's coming from the natural acceptance or preconditioning or sensation. So is it okay to say if I mostly observe the feelings or the desire that that's how it's associated, um, then I get more progress in my observation? Yes. So from thought I, to yes. feeling and from feeling to naturally acceptable feeling. Okay. <clears throat> this is the way we can progress. If I just keep Thank on you. observing my thought, it will not help. If I just keep no. on observing my feeling, that will also not help much. Okay. But the point is that when I'm able to observe my feeling and I have some inkling, some hint in me that there is natural acceptance in me also. And then I try to evaluate it that very moment. Thank you so much. Nice to hear. Lipi Goswamiji. Namaste, Bhaya. Namaste, everyone. Uh, so, Bhaya, uh, these days when I am uh, trying to uh, do the assignment of imagination, then thought and desire, uh, then... Uh, I feel I'm feeling that when I am aware that I have to do this, I just close my mind and want to visualize what is in my thought. Then uh, whatever is really existing, that means uh, when I'm moving in my bus uh, to the university, so it takes 45 minutes and then I try, uh, try that what is my thought. Then I feel that I have no thought in that way, but the thing is that uh, whatever I am uh, seeing the picture, that means there is a trees, uh, then say the trees with flowers, colorful flowers, only those things are coming in my mind. And after that also, after reaching university, I am in my work and all this. Uh, so after that also, uh, in some moment, I close my eyes and imagine that what is my thought, then those thoughts comes and what uh, say student is coming. So I'm telling something to him or like this. So these things, whatever happens during these days. So these are my thoughts. So in that case, I cannot relate uh, the desire with my thoughts and with with my imagination. Say uh, when I become much more aware, then sometimes I don't have any thought. So can you uh, just um, clarify me, Bhaiya? It so happens, you know, that at times, like, uh, for example, we are doing something and we're getting tired. Then we get time to relax. 
when you get time to relax, then we are mostly focused on the body, right? And then we are unaware of whatever is going inside me. But after you have taken some rest, then all those things start coming or becoming clear to you. So you are there in the bus and maybe you have been trying to get ready on time. You are tired also doing all the chores and you know, other activities in the house. You sit in the bus, you, you feel relaxed that yes, now I'm inside the bus, the bus is going to take me to the office quite on time. Now with that, initially, you are just trying to give rest to the body, so you are focused on the body. You will observe that you are paying attention to the sensation from the body and then the thought is going on with that at, at, at the focus. Then the desire is also something like that. And then after some time, your imagination starts migrating from body to something more important. So our priorities keep on shifting. So generally when our priority is to give something to the body, like nurture the body, to give rest to the body, you feel that I'm not doing anything. It's only that I have become ignorant of whatever is happening inside me. So it's not that activity is not there in the self. The activity is there, but I'm not aware. So when I'm aware every moment that I'm not the body, this body is my instrument, right? I'm a conscious in it. Then I can see this very clearly every moment, whatever is going on inside me. But many times we are not even aware, we are not even questioning. And we see that we are assuming at those moments that I and body are the same. So why to think of all this? So many times during the day we are completely unaware, completely ignorant of the reality and we are just doing something or the other. And then it may appear that I have no thought, but that's not the case. So having thought and not being aware is one thing. Having no thought is something else. So try to make out the level of awareness has to go up okay okay bhaiya so uh, one more one thing i want to share is that i was uh, studying an article and the name of the article is uh, indian senior citizen uh, dying rich and living poor so when i was studying i just mm-hmm. can meet the sessions with the uhv sessions so uh, this is a very nice feeling that i can relate everything with that article so this is also one of the sharing thank you thank you bhaiya yeah but again i'll say that if you have read some article then try to read more carefully and try to look into the meaning the essence of what is being said so people of course trying to talk about reality but what at what point of time some preconditioning or sensation gets mixed up we have to be aware so that we are able to evaluate rightly no oh, yes yes whatever comes to us as a proposal Yes, yes, yes. Nice to Namaste, Bhaiya. Namaste. My question is, is there any universal language for this? For what? For communication or understanding between two. See, language is a symbol. Symbol is something to do with the form and property. It can never be universal. It can always change with time and place. Yeah, this question is coming to me because, Bhaiya, that's, if you take the example of a mother and child, a just a born baby and a mother. Mother may have the language, known language, but child, I think there is no language. But there is a communication between those two selves. Can you relate yeah. this, Bhaiya? But that is not universal. When the baby is crying, the mother may feel like rushing to the baby and you know, helping the baby. Or when the mother has sent to the same habit of crying of the child multiple times, she may get irritated also at times. So she may not rush for help. So she may associate different meanings at different occasions. So if you say that the language is merely the sound, fine, the sound is there. Sound is there in the universe. Sound is effect of one unit on another unit, like effect of the body of the baby on air. So that is there, right? But if you call it a language, then it also means how we associate the meaning to that sound. So the physiochemical units are there. The relation between physical chemical is there, but when we when I call it a language, right, then it becomes like we are associating some meaning also to that, no? and that cannot be universal. So the mother may respond to the crying of the baby on different occasions differently. The mother is tired the whole day. The baby is crying at two o'clock. She may try to sleep, maybe at times ignoring the crying of the baby, right? But when she is fit and fine, then she may try to do as many things as possible for the baby. So the same sound of crying may carry different meanings. Okay? Yeah, yeah, Bhaiya, yes. Thank you, Bhaiya. Thank you very much. So I think some more hands are raised. So we'll not go for observation. Let me take the questions. Nirupam ji. Ji, Namaste, Bhaiya. Namaste. Bhaiya, I also have a portion uh, about from the 
discussion of Geeta Didi and Surakant Vaya. As uh, we learned from the discussion that thought does not need language. Bhaiya, from uh, the all the discussion... May or may not. It yeah? may or may not. May or may, may not. May or may not, yes. Okay, okay, bhai, okay. Bhaiya, actually, um, something triggers to me like na, development in a human being it continuous. Uh, it does mean ki by self is continuous. Uh, body is uh, being changed time to time as per every bodily journey. Whatever I have uh, developed myself in past, uh, in the last bodily journey, I am carrying forward in this bodily journey and so on for the next bodily journey. So, bhai, yeah, this development uh, is a stored in wait, his wait, form wait, in wait. the self. Development is not continuous. Self is uh, continuous. Linear, linear. Actually, no. Self is continuous. The activities yeah. of the self are continuous. Okay. Mm. But development may or may not take place. Uh, yeah, linear yeah, is yeah. fine. Linear is fine. Mm. So when you are exploring, you are might be developing. But when you are not exploring and just you are trying to look for happiness from outside, right? You may start living at a lower state of development. So yeah. it could be zigzag also. Yeah, I understood the yeah. But I'm telling if if someone has some self, some uh, one of the self has developed himself or self, जो भी बोले, अब फिर वो next body journey में जो carry forward होता है, then it this uh, development is being carried forward in the self in which form means uh, feeling or uh, means whether it, it, it is some language. Actually, this question also uh, came into my mind because uh, I have uh, uh, gone through some books. Uh, in that I uh, uh, and uh, some article that uh, during past life regression, many patients, many subject or patient uh, uh, speak the language which they have never known about. Means might be a, a person living in India uh, is uh, speaking some language or uh, Japanese or Greece, something like that, uh, which he have never uh, gone there in this bodily journey. So something okay. is uh, stored. Now, these are two different things. Something there as a part of my memory. Memory is retention. Okay. That could be there. So I have been retaining so many things. When I consider something important, then that retention comes to the fore and I start paying attention to it. So I may be speaking some language earlier. I am no longer using that language. So, for example, many of us might have read, let's say, Sanskrit during childhood. And maybe now, if you are given uh, some written in Sanskrit, you might not be able to make out or might not be able to even speak mm -hmm. sentence of Sanskrit. But if you try to go back and recollect, you may be able to do that. Yeah. Now, development is something else. Memory is something else. Retaining something as a language within me, right, is an information. It is not development. Development essentially means development in the activities of the self. So, essentially it is awakening to the activity of contemplation, understanding and realization. And its effect on block B2. That yeah. is development. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Priti Srivastaji. Good morning, Bhaiya. Bhaiya, uh, two, three days before I asked you this question that the source of our imagination about the sensation and natural acceptance and I'm still stick to, stuck to that uh, same question. And I want to give a small example that yesterday I went out somewhere and it is very hot. Usually I carry the water bottle but I this, this yesterday I couldn't carry the water bottle and the where I went out is just a 10 minutes or 15 minutes journey and there was a work of half an hour so I I started feeling thirsty and when I was I could have taken the uh, water bought the bottle from somewhere but I thought that it is just a question of half an hour and I was coming back and I was feeling very thirsty. So throughout that journey of 12 minutes, when I was coming back, 12 to 15 minutes, I was just imagining that I'll go home and have water. My body needs water. I'll have two, three, I'll drink two, three glass of water and all that. So there were two observations related to this. As more I was imagining, more I was getting, uh, you know, restless. And um, and I, I observed that once I reached uh, um, home and I was at the like the water is was in my approach that restlessness was less this was one observation and second one I drank water for two two three glasses of water and just quenched my thirst 
but i was thinking that this imagination or this wasn't it wasn't the sensation due to due to the sensation of thirst in body and also the natural acceptance that my body needs water so aren't uh, in most of the cases the source like natural acceptance and sensation are same no see again you look at this whole scenario you have might have missed some observation here so for example ask yourself why do you need to take water because my body needs it and what if i am getting dehydrated yes what will happen if the body is not getting water as it is very hot and i want to keep myself de- uh, hydrated and if i don't the body does not get water i'll start feeling sick look into all these things you know so it might be the case like presently when you are saying now you are saying in one manner but at that point of time you might be feeling restless so there is some sensation from the body which is making me restless now this restlessness is because of some preconditioning no no it was actually not restlessness it was actually the eagerness to drink water what is eagerness here like i i, I want to drink water soon <laughs> so because i am feel see i am able to see that i will reach home in 12 minutes right and i need yeah. water for the body and the body you know had scarcity of water so i need to use the water so that the body remains healthy if that is clear to me i'll just move to the house in 12 minutes and take it and then i'll take it peacefully so Even no it was uh, actually sorry bhai i want to interrupt it was not 12 minutes was the uh, like the extreme point before that 12 minutes of journey to that place and half an hour remaining to that place so till that okay, time okay, i was okay, okay. i'm just saying see on a observe this thing so it's not that natural acceptance and sensation are the same you are getting some sensation from the body if you are getting restless it is not natural acceptance it is again something to do with the meaning that associate to that sensation and that could be based on some preconditioning like what if my body gets dehydrated you know what if the body is no more what will happen to me what will happen this way that way all those things might occur so many times we become restless or anxious because of some sensation from the body so that is a sensation now i am associating some meaning to that sensation and that could be based on some preconditioning the natural acceptance is that i am going to be there forever right i am going to continue the body is a temporary unit the body has physiochemical activities and the physical chemical activities are not in harmony at the moment in the body <clears throat> so i need to provide some physiochemical thing to the body i'll make a program for it i can do it peacefully without getting restless or without getting anxious and when i take water i'll take it in a way so that it ensures health not that i just keep on drinking or i take out bottle of water from the fridge cold water and i have come from a scorching sun and i take it because it may you know store my throat so all those things should be there so nice didi keep on observing we'll discuss uh, further still Time still is. not still lot to discuss on this because okay. i am not yet convinced i have to explore more so maybe tomorrow or day after i'll ask uh, the same question again so right please. because Time i is. have to yeah thank you you observe the feeling with the thirst try to observe yeah. it try to go back look back on this and then try to make out okay now nice. okay. so but it okay. is time now so we switch to hindi session okay request to bhara bhaiya to kindly conclude thank you bhai ji ji bhai thank you so much kumar bhaiya for putting all the discussion and answering our question and all the help all of us for self exploration to look the reality as it